How we doing? Good how was how was your bye week? How, how did you spend the time away? Yeah, I just took uh, you know, like any other bye week, obviously some, some time away from the building a little bit, but also really diving into some things, um, talking to my coaches, and um, really having having great moments with Nick. Just four games so far. Did that change the process at all? No. Well, I think this is probably, um, I say, one of the most efficient bye weeks I've, I've been a part of this year. Uh, what my career, excuse me, just been able to, like I said, share those moments and um, talk through some things and build. What do, you, what do you guys talk about? What made the moments great? I don't want to get too in, into it, but uh, some great moments. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that those moments revealed themselves now? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, I think the reality for us, we just have to go out there and, and play within ourselves and in our identity and who we are, you know, and I think that's something that we've been able to establish and we just have to um, do it consistently, you know, and, and trust everyone on that field. And that obviously starts with me and my approach and um, doing it. What specifically do you feel like you need to improve on in these last 13 games? Well, I think it starts with me in terms of us playing clean football. You know, I touch the ball every play. There's a ton of responsibility in that, and I, I love the position because of that um, and the opportunity to, to set the pace and set the tempo for everything else on the field. And so I'm just uh, excited for that. We're all excited for it. You're back at practice starting to implement some of the things you, you've learned and, and need to work on. How much of a confidence booster is it to have A.J. Devontae and Lane back out there? It's always good to have you guys out there. You know, I, I jokingly said to it's nice to see some familiar faces in there, but we, we trust everybody that's out there, you know, and that's um that's that's always a mentality when we're out there, but you, but you know those guys bring, bring a different level of impact with their presence on the field and what they're able to do. It sounds like first year, you in your first year starting, I, I should say, you spoke to us about how you really like hard coaching and I think it was after the Washington game you said you you live with your hardest coach. Mm-hmm. As, as you've kind of grown in, in, in your career, is that still the type of coaching that you want, still the coaching that makes you better? Um, you know, I think you can interpret what hard is, um, direct. Um, you want to kind of make it as clean as possible. And, you know, you, you kind of have you have the parameters you have when you're out there on the field and you want to abide by those parameters and go out there and play clean football. And so I think that's why it's so important uh, to communicate. And I think that's exactly what we, we've had the opportunity to do, um, just um, talking to talking to all of my coaches and, and really really building. When, when you look at the uh, when you look back at the first four games, how much do you think a part of that was still kind of learning Kellen's offense, or or was it more just the guys that you didn't have, you know, over those last three games? I think it's um I think it's a, a bit of both, um, but. But honestly, I think both affect each other. You know, I think it's about, you know, living in the identity and being who we are and um, having a mentality of it's about us. It's not about what's been done to them, um, the, the opposing team, what they do. It, it comes down to how we decide to play, and we have to trust in that. You know, we, we've uh, just got to trust in that. It's been a while, it's, it's been a while for you, Jalen, but... When when Jim Schwartz was here, your first year, it, can you tap back into that? Remember what it was like to to work with his defense? No, nah, it was. Uh, I mean, I always had a really good defense. Uh, he's a really good coach. This energy, I know he holds his defense to a high standard. He plays, he coaches, and, and he kind of, you know, rubs off of, you know, himself to others. Uh, uh, a, a good swagger, and so um, a lot of respect for him. Obviously, the Browns um, got got great players, um, a great front seven. Um, they got great great defense led by a great coach. So, going back to uh, AJ Devontae and Lane working their way back, you guys have talked about finding your identity a lot this season. How important is having those guys to find that identity? I think it's different. You know, you look at the first four games, it's, it's been different situations. And um, ultimately, it comes down to what you do with what you have, you know, and, and the positions we're in and, and uh, taking advantage of those things. But like I said, um, everything is predicated, you know, 
It's 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 about the playmakers, you know, and, and, and have opportunities to make plays, and those guys play a big role in that. It sounds like maybe you guys honed in on an identity, though, during a, during a bye week. Do you, what do you feel like it is? I know there's a lot of discussion going in about, you know, what you guys, what the identity was going to be. Yeah, it's just doing what we do and doing what we've done. Without being specific, can you talk talk about how do you go about trying to play more clean football and, and not turning the ball over? Um, you know, Coach Coach Sirianni talked about the details today, and I think that's what it, that's what it comes down to, um, from timing to communication, uh, everyone being on the same page on the field in terms of what play is called and how we execute that play. Um, defining it, you know, alleviating the gray and anything and saying, hey, this is exactly what, you know, we're doing on this and, um, you know, with the talent we have, letting the talent take over when it's time to. How about the, uh, the slow starts to games? What, what needs to be done to fix that? And then how does that affect you guys in the game plan when you're playing from behind? Yeah, I think it's, it's very important to start fast. That's something that has traditionally been something we've done well. And we, we haven't been able to do it as well as we want to this year. You know, we've had some good drives early, but maybe couldn't finish or, you know, had a turnover or, um, you know, all these different things. And so I think once we get going, we get going. We just have to be able to do that earlier. And so it's definitely a goal. Everybody's working towards that. Um, we're just going to continue to take it day by day. Um, I think you know, we'll, we'll get to a point, you know, where we get rolling. It's just about – Continue to remain steadfast in it. The moments with Nick over the bye week, what what prompted that? It might, you know, somebody might say, okay, it's the bye week. I need to get away. I need to clear my head, and then come back fresh. But it sounds like you guys both felt the need to come together and and deal with some stuff. Well, it's, we're, the, we're the two leaders of the team, you know, and I'm, I'm I'm happy and fortunate that you know we were able to come come together in harmony and and have the same goal in mind and trying to get this thing right. Um, I got a, a ton of confidence in him, a ton of confidence in what, what he brings and um, everything he's been able to accomplish and just continue to press on on that, you know. Everybody goes through different moments. Everybody experiences adversity, but we're, we've experienced different levels of adversity together and um, we're excited for what's to come. So you really felt like it was it was a neat thing, like you, you guys needed to, to kind of have this summit? I felt like it, it was something that just happened. He's handled it, and how do you think that together you've handled it? What adversity? Losing some games in, in the fashion you did. Yeah, we, we, we all go through those things. We, we lose, we win as a team, and we lose as a team. And we're just going to continue to press forward. We're always going to look back and say, what could we have done better? You really start losing when you stop learning. And there hasn't been a moment where we stop learning. And so it'll show at some point, maybe not have shown right now or any time, you know, in these past four weeks, but it'll show. You know, we, it'll show. We just have to settle in, um, settle in, play our game. Um, at, the, at the end of the day, control what we can and, and keep the main thing the main thing. Two more. Two more. Two more. Um, I, know, I know in the past uh, you and Deshaun have had a relationship worked out together. I know he's very happy when you signed your contract. Um, obviously not this week, but do you, do you guys as peers or anybody else in the league – do you have as a sounding board to say, hey, I'm going through this, I'm going through this? There's a couple guys around the league um, from different schools and, and whatnot and people I've been able to train with throughout my career. But, um, you know, I got a lot of respect for him as a player and it um, be good to go go out there and compete. But uh, in, in, in the Alabama game, Dale Milrow, after the game, uh, did you see what he wore, did you hear what he said? And if so, what did that mean to you? I got a um, I got a text of him wearing the shirt. Uh, I don't know what he said, but got a ton of respect for Jalen. You know, hell of a player, hell of a player. Another Houston kid coming out of there. Coach Saban went back to Houston to go get him, and um, he he's paved himself a a great journey at, at the University of Alabama. And so I'm excited for him and, and hoping that um, you know he can he can finish the year off strong. Got a lot of lot of love and respect for him. Thanks, John. Yeah.